Good morning. Welcome to the Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Free Press Media Press Inc. and Alternative Parties Books Publisher sponsors this podcast. I'm Andrew Bouchard. Welcome to Long Live Alternative Parties podcast. Today, friends, we have another exciting guest on this podcast, and he's running for local office in his area. He's with the Green Party. He's in Ohio, and I'm going to have him tell you what office and what city he's from. His name is Zachary Contra. So welcome to the podcast, Zachary. Hey, Andrew. Thank you so much for having me. If we could get started by you kindly giving us an introduction to yourself, a brief biographical sketch, and kindly tell our audience what city and what race specifically you're running in. Sure. So just to clarify, I'm actually in Massachusetts, so I'm running okay. for uh, Holbrook Select Board, which is you know kind of our, our city council uh, here in town. Um, yeah, I'm from Western Ohio. Um, I've been involved with the Green Party um, for almost four years now here in Massachusetts um, as, a, as a grassroots organizer. Um, I've served on a number of different state party committees, um, including um, communications, membership, and um, administrative. Um, and I've been the membership director for the Green Party for uh, since 2022. Okay. So we want to focus on your race, yet if mm-hmm. we could, if you could briefly tell us what duties and responsibilities are involved in the membership coordinator. We have people in our audience who are involved in parties and organizations, so they might be interested sure. in that at some point. So if you kindly explain, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I had no um, kind of blueprint for, for when I was elected to the position of membership director for the Greens here in Massachusetts. Um, okay. So a lot of that I had to kind of base it on my own experience working in campaigns as a volunteer and as a grassroots organizer. Um, the main thing I really took away from the experience is is really tying down communication. So we have a number of different chapters of the Green Party uh, operating in different regions of the state. Um, okay. And so it's making sure that they had the tools and resources they needed to be successful with their outreach um, and, and supporting their local candidates. Um, so I was involved with producing um, materials and literature for them. Um, I helped to establish new chapters in different parts of the state, um, including a, a youth chapter, actually, because the Greens didn't have any kind of youth program at the time. Oh. Um, so we put in a new uh, a youth chapter, statewide chapter, called the Mass Young Greens, um, which I'm, I'm very happy to say has, has been growing and been a vibrant part of um, our, our outreach here in, in Massachusetts. Um, so that was a, that was a big uh, accomplishment for us to get that going. Um, yeah, sounds like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it was it was a great experience. Um, I was happy with. Uh, the work we did, um, again, it's, it really just comes down to, to communication and, and building relationships within uh, the different branches of the party, working with state committee. Um, a lot of moving parts, a lot of different responsibilities. Um, but, yeah, it was a great experience. Excellent, excellent. So kindly tell our audience the, the demographics of the area that you're in for your race. What are the mm-hmm. demographics of the area? Yeah, so um, as I said, I live in Holbrook, Massachusetts, which is a small town uh, here in Eastern Mass. Um, we're just south of Boston, if you're not sure where that is, um, kind of wedged in between Randolph and Brockton area. Um, so we're kind of surrounded by everybody. Um, but the demographics, um, I mean, it's it, traditionally it's, it's been more of a, a, a white working class Irish Catholic community, but um, over the last several decades, um, it's become a much more diverse community with a lot of folks coming in from Boston and Brockton and, and other nearby areas. Um, a lot of younger families are moving in to the town. Um, and it's, it's, I would say it's politics are, are, are kind of mixed. I mean, you have a, a mixture of, of conservative and, and more progressive. Um, we have a strong, um, I'm proud to say we have a strong, um, environmentalist movement here in the state, or excuse Good. me, in the town. Um, which has been growing steadily in the last several years. Um, people who are, are kind of fed up with, um, the pollution that's been going on within, you know, uh, our ponds and our, and our drinking water is, is a big issue as well. Um, 
but yeah, so it's, 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 like I said, it's a growing community. It's, 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 and it's diversity, I would say, is very much changing over the next several years. Okay. So for your race, can you please tell us how you decided to run for school board in the first place? Uh, uh select board, actually. Select board, uh, I'm sorry. I'm no, that's sorry. all right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, like I said, I've been a town resident, um, since 2020. Okay. And, um, I just, like I said, I got involved with, uh, some of the local uh, environmentalists. I became a town meeting member in 2022. Um, and I formed my own, um, uh, what we call a caucus or, 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 um, you know, political action group called uh, the Holbrook Town Meeting Green Caucus. Um, oh. So we are, we're a group of town meeting members who are passionate and concerned about uh, our local environment, wanting to protect our open spaces like our town forest. Um, we're all about cleaning up our water um, and the pollution in town and making sure that we preserve um, our open spaces that are continuously under assault from, from developers and, and some town officials who would like to see that land sold off and, and developed. Um, so that was really the start of my kind of involvement with the town. Um, and after a couple of years, um, you know, I decided that I mean, we did some good work um, as, a, as a town meeting group, but um, we could only do so much through that collective action. So we realized that the real power comes from our town officials and specifically our select board who make a lot of the appointments on the different committees that make a lot of the decisions in town and, and they kind of steer the, uh, the direction of, of where the town goes. Um, and since we were successful with, um, other progressive candidates running last year and, and were able to win, uh, I decided it was a great opportunity for me to, to step up and to, to take a role in, in running. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to say that we've we've gotten a lot of grassroots support from a lot of different er, uh, areas of the community, um, people who are really looking for change um, and somebody different um, kind of stepping into that position. Because um, the town is, you know, it's, it's it has it's it's problems just like any community. Um, but I feel like the leadership has been very divided um, on the select board, and um, yeah, I'm, I, I think. Like I said, the, the people are really excited about um, something different, and being representing the Greens and as and a third party candidate um, is certainly not the norm here. And, and so I'm very proud okay. to, to represent the Greens in that capacity, um, and and you know representing our our point of view as opposed to just the Democrats and Republicans who typically uh, have dominance over these elections. Sure. So what you mentioned some things in general in your area about general environmental things like making mm -hmm. the water clean and not developing land. What specific issues are on the table that you want to bring forth in this election? Yeah, absolutely. So, as I said, with our drinking water, um, we have issues with our water treatment plant. Um, okay. We have a lot We have a lot of PFAS uh, in our water um, to the point where a lot of locals will not drink it. My um, wow. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So, um they've obviously there's been a lot of delays in building a new plant and and cleaning up the water supply, um which they say could take another 3 years is my understanding uh before that's officially um completed. Um so it's it's a, yeah, it's a continuous problem. Um that's something I I put in the forefront of my campaign. Uh other issues I want to focus on uh, in addition to my environmental work in town I'm also a, a was appointed a member of the diversity and inclusion committee uh -huh. um and and so you know so again like I mentioned we have a, a growing diversity in our town and unfortunately that has not been reflected in our town government as of so far um hmm. so I really would like to to focus on involving the committee more with um, with the select board and helping them make appointments and helping to better represent the town's changing different demographics and making sure that underrepresented minorities um, have a voice in our government um, because uh, it's, it's something that I think has, has not really been addressed uh, and not in detail as it should be. Um, and then, of course, um, like I said, I, I really want to focus on bringing some civility 
um, and common sense uh, to our select board meetings, um, just because, like I said, there's, there's been a lot of animosity and 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 fighting going on um, with with some of our different committees, and uh, I think we need a more even <laughs> kilted um, people involved with our government to make sure that that things are getting done and that we're we're working for the good of the people and and putting them first above you know personalities and scoring political points. So that's something I hope to bring as well. Um, and then lastly, one of my bigger issues is, is transparency. Um, you know, one of the criticisms I think our town and other communities across Massachusetts um, get criticized that our, our government is not as upfront with, with the people on what's going on and, and a lot of deals and, and decisions getting made behind closed doors and not enough communication um, to us about what the town is doing. Um, and I think the residents have a right to know um, sure. what our, our government officials do and, and so we can hold them accountable. Um, so, yeah, those are those are my real top issues. Of course, there's plenty of other stuff, <laughs> other issues going on in the town as well, but um, those are the overall arching things that um, I think are important and something that I, I talk about a lot with, uh, with my campaign. Sure. And it seems like that's the core issues of the Green Party, so it sounds like a good opportunity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because I think Greens, you know, especially in Massachusetts, are, are not as represented as, as in maybe other parts of the country or parts of the world, um, which is really unfortunate, I think, because in my opinion, you know, the Green Party platform, I think, really appeals to a lot of folks um, who, who are disenfranchised with uh, the two-party system, uh, who feel like Republicans and Democrats are not really focused on the things at home that they should be. Um, you know, one of the big issues for the Greens, obviously, is, is we're, we're anti-war party and uh, with all the different conflicts going on around the world um, and obviously the threat to our environment and, and the climate crisis, um, it's, you know, issues that I think the, uh, the two parties tend to, to not really step up to the plate um, in addressing properly. Um, so, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm very proud to represent the Greens here in Holbrook and uh, you know, we'll see what the voters decide uh, come April. It'll be April 6th um, okay. for for election here in Holbrook. So it's coming up pretty soon, in a couple of weeks. Oh, sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, so, well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so they're not having that in November with the other stuff. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's typical for, I don't know what other communities do, but for Holbrook, yeah, we usually have our elections um, the first uh, Saturday of, of April. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 what's your strategy for re- reaching the voters in your area? It's a good question. Um, so, so far, I mean, I got a, I got in early, earlier than some of the other candidates. So, um, my main thing was is getting out there because you know, compared to some of the other folks who are running, um, I I don't have as big as name recognition to some who aren't involved with in, environmental issues. Um. So my main thing was uh, getting out on Facebook and having a really proactive Facebook campaign, uh, making sure that we're reaching out to our community pages um, and, of course, the individuals, um, networking with them to get my my message out about my candidacy. Um, So we were very heavy about uh, having an online presence in the beginning. And then, of course, um, you know, the face-to-face stuff, even though it's old school, it still works. Um, So we've been very proactive in... Um, making sure that we have like meet and greets, um, talking to the voters. Um, right now we're in the middle of a, a door knocking campaign, so we're going door to door, um, in our neighborhoods and, and reaching voters that way. Um, we'll be sending out postcards, um, to different strategic, uh, voters based on our, our voter list and information we have, um, to try to get as many folks, um, as possible. And then, of course, just meeting with people. Um, you know, I've been meeting with, uh, you know, the Council on Aging recently. Um, we, we have a public forum actually coming up next week um, between the candidates. Uh, so we'll be, you know, they'll be taped live, and then they'll be sending that out through HCAM, which is our, our local broadcasting um, network that they have. And um, so we'll, they'll be, you know, asking us questions from the town residents and things that they want to hear from us and hearing our different answers. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that and being able to, to kind of speak more directly to the people. Okay. 
So what was the process for getting on the ballot? Did you have to get signatures, pay a fee, or how did that work there? Yeah, so uh, it was, yeah, we have to get 50 signatures uh, to get on the ballot here in Holbrook. Um, so that was a bit of a process, uh, especially as an unknown candidate early on. Uh, it took some time to build some momentum and, and get some attention. Um, but I, you know, I went everywhere. I talked to everybody I knew in town. I, I organized, uh, you know, uh, to invite people to come out to our local library to gather signatures. And we had a open space, uh, committee event. Um, that was open to the public, inviting them to come and talk about open space issues and, and our environment, which was a great opportunity to, to talk to voters about green issues, and that was very successful. Um, and then, of course, yeah, for the remaining ones I needed, I just went door to door for anyone who was willing to sign. Um, so we were able to get on the ballot through through a lot of hard work that way. Um, but yeah, that's that's the general process here. Okay, good, good. So that's awesome. You made the ballot and. That's a big accomplishment I hear from our candidates in general getting on the ballot. It's a hard job for them to do. So we applaud whenever you do it. So we applaud you for getting on the ballot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's it was more work than I thought it'd be for sure. Um, Come on. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> so for this, since the race is coming up, are you doing anything different in the last part of the race that you were doing before or are you continuing the same thing because you think the same thing is good for every part of the race um yeah I, i'd say I've, i'm kind of continuing everything that we've been doing up to this point and just really pushing hard the last couple weeks um to, to reach as many people as we can um for example this saturday actually we're I invited a bunch of my supporters to come to town square Okay. Um, we'll be we'll be holding uh, my campaign signs there, uh, which is like a public area where we can stand. Um, so you know, Saturday morning traffic coming through, just trying to get as much um, eyes on us as we can, letting people know that I'm running, um, and showing you know grassroots support for for my campaign. Um, trying to see if that can inspire people to to consider voting for me. And then of course, yeah, like I said, I'm just I'm going to be knocking on a lot of doors uh, in the next two weeks. Um, just trying to reach as many voters as possible. Okay. So you're talking about we. So it sounds like you have a good team with you. Is that correct? Yeah. No, I, I could not have gotten as far as I have without uh, the support from my volunteers here in the community of Holbrook, but also uh, the green the Greens here in Massachusetts have also been very supportive of my campaign, especially the Young Greens. Um, who've been down here helping me on a regular basis um, and, and advising me on, on campaign issues. And uh, they'll be out here next week to help knock on doors. Um, so, the, yeah, they've been terrific um, in helping to, to get the word out and to help this campaign build some momentum uh, going into Election Day. Okay. So if you win the race, when do you take office for it? When does the new term start? Um, I'm pretty sure it starts right away because um, oh. you get sworn in. Yeah, because I think the last day uh, for the incumbent uh, is is on election day, uh, which is kind of strange. But it's, yeah, it's the, how we do it here. But um, yeah, so it'll. I'll, my understanding is that I'll be on the job. Um, I think the week after the election. Okay, so, throw, so, you, throw you right so in. You don't got it. much time to chill out after that. You got to go right right into it. <laughs> Right to work, yep. <laughs> but, Interesting. Hey, yeah. Yeah. So there's no lame duck there then, that's good. No, once you're out, you're out. Um so right now we have one incumbent who's running for re election and then an open seat. And then there's one other challenger who's who's running in the race. So it's a three person race right now and only two Four. seats open. Okay, so there's three people and two seats. I like to hear that because that means it you got there's a fairly good chance that you could get it. It's it's yeah it's it's not a bad it's not bad odds. Um, the only disadvantage I would say I have is the other two candidates are more have bigger name recognition than I do. Uh, obviously, you have a sitting incumbent, and then you have another uh, fella who's who's been active in the community for a while. Who's been on FinCom and um, active with the the youth and the baseball team and all that kind of stuff. So he has a lot of recognition and he has run before. But um I think 
I'm the only one who's running on a real progressive platform, and, okay. and I think that will separate me from the other two, um, assuming the voters take the time to kind of look at us closely and, and kind of focus on policy issues. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So, Zachary, how can our audience support your campaign? <laughs> well, um, I am self-funding this campaign, so I, I know donations would be appreciated, but I decided that I wanted to take that on myself um, to not take money away from from the folks uh, in our community. Um, okay. But I'm, but the main thing I, I think for us is, you know, obviously anyone who lives nearby who is willing to volunteer is obviously a big help. Um, but really just cheering us on and supporting us on social media um, and just getting the word out that we have more third-party candidates who are running because I know the, you know, the mainstream media certainly doesn't give us the time of day. Yeah. Um, you know, e- even here in town, I had a hard time getting local papers to even print an article about mm. you know, us running. So, uh, But that's okay. You know, um, really it's, it's the people that – I'm here to to inspire and and to to get their their attention. So, um, you know, the establishment's going to do what they're going to do, and that's okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. So Great. we wish you we wish you luck in that upcoming election. You said April six, and that's coming right up. So we wish you all the best in this upcoming election. Thank you so much, and 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 Andrew, thank you again for for inviting me on. Um, you know, like I said, not a lot of podcasts or mainstream institutions really give us the time of day. So I really appreciate the work that you do and giving us third party candidates an opportunity to speak. Um, I think it's, it's so important for our democracy that we have choice, um, whether you're green or libertarian or whatever. Um, we need more third parties. We need more, um, more people to run that aren't just the establishment. Um, can't, you know, the establishment choice. So, Again, thank you for for having me and um, and for the work that you do. I appreciate the compliment. It's our pleasure to have people like you on the podcast. Awesome. All right. All well, right. Thank Take you, care Andrew. and all the best. I hear you too. Bye bye. Bye.